So hopefully you're done with the setup now, and today we're going to look at one of the most fundamental rules of functional programming, and it is that you never change the value of a variable, so you never use let, alright? And I'm going to show you how, how to work around this limitation throughout the series, and I'm also going to show you why this is very useful. But let's first look at an example with let. So I'm going to create a variable called age, and I'm going to set it equal to 30 as an example. Now, what I'll do is I'll just say age plus plus, all right? This will reinitialize this age to 31, so we're changing the value. Now, this is a forbidden thing in functional programming, but I'm just showing you. So let's console.log the age and see what happens. As you can see, we get 31 instead of 30 because we've changed the value. So how would you how would you ch do this in functional programming if we have to use const? Because the the minute I write const, it will give me an error because you cannot reassign the value of a constant. So instead, what I'll just say is const new age. So I'm creating a new variable, and then I'll set that equal to age plus one. All right. And then we can console.log the new age. And as you can see, we still get 31. Now, I'll be the first to admit that this is a, v a very much an oversimplification. And that this in itself maybe isn't as useful. But throughout the series, I'll show you how we can, how we can work around always using constants instead of um, variables. All right? But first of all, why is this useful? You know, why, why would you want to have that? Well, let's say I'll have a data, all right? And you can change that, all right? And I'll just say that it is an object with a result where result is 23, okay? It actually could also be constant because you obviously can change parts inside of a, an object, all right? So let's say we've got this data. And now this data is used in some functions. For example, in a function, it is used over there. And we've also got some form of asynchronous process. All right. And then we've got another function. All right. And this obviously also, ex both of them expect 23 as, as the result. All right. So this function only happens after this asynchronous process. All right. So this definitely happens after this function. All right. So... Let's say that this first function now change changes the the actual result. So now we've got a new result. It's now 24 instead of 23. And this is going to be used later on in this one, but now it gets the wrong result, right? So you know, just imagine that in this function you for some reason you're doing some form of calculation and you have to change the value for that calculation. And now we've got loads of side effects. That what we that's what we generally call side effects, all right? And now you can you may, maybe this doesn't show exactly how how you know how side effects can actually introduce bugs um, that well, but you can imagine, especially if you've got a lot of functions and they're all happening at the same time, then you can really see how that can turn into a problem if they all change the value of this result, all right? So let's actually have a look at this example inside of the code, all right? So over here, I've got the boilerplate, all right? So I've got two functions, a piece of data, and I've actually, I'll turn this data into let so that we can actually change it for this example. And then we've got, we we're calling both of the functions, all right? And just to make it absolutely clear that the second one comes after the first one, I will put it into a set timeout. So, you know, imagine that this might be some form of asynchronous process. And this is going to happen after, let's say, one second. All right? And in the first function, I'm just going to say data plus plus. Let's say we're just calculating something with this data. And we're just changing the value for the calculation. And then in the second function, I'm just going to console... Con console.log a string. I'm going to say data, and we expect it to be 20, obviously. 
and we're going to see what it actually is. All right? Now, this is just an example. You can imagine that we've actually got something, you know, something over here that uh, other than just logging something to the console. And as, as you can now see, we've got the date over here. We expect it to be 20, but it is actually 21. And that's because we just changed the value of this data. So you maybe can see how this can cause some bugs. And how can we change it so that this doesn't happen? Well, we'll have a look at that in the very next video. Bye.